In this video we start with creating a basic material which we can use in the next video for creating a little bit more complex stuff to create more realistic shader. For the shading and also for the rendering part we will use this Cycles render engine. That means you should know the basic about Cycles to better follow this video. The topic shading could be a very very complex topic. If you have tried Cycles for a while and maybe you've downloaded some materials of professional Blender users, you look at the node trees and think what the what are these for complex stuff and you have no idea what all these things are doing. But don't worry, in this video we want to show you how you can do this a simple way and also have nice results without creating giant no trees. Before we start creating our shaders, we should have a look at the real life. That means how does these materials look in reality? Take a look at the surface. Is it rough or is it flat? Has it glossy in it or is this matte? Is the material transparent or translucent? There are many things that make the material unique and also looks realistic. And all these different properties we try to adapt to our digital materials. Basically we can say that every material should have a color, a specular. The best way to use this is also to use a specular map, that the specular is not everywhere with the same strength on the surface. Then it should have a bump map so that you have a little uneven surface. And some materials also have translucent or transparent properties. Yeah, with these little settings we can do very much, certainly in connection with using textures. Yeah, and in the next video we also show you a little more. We start with creating a basic material and this basic material has basically all the properties I named before, like the bump maps, the specular map and also the color. To save some time we'll use only one texture for one material. That means the specular map, the bump map and maybe some color adjustments we all do inside Blender so we don't use any external image manipulation program. In the last video we showed you how to create seamless textures and here we'll use these seamless textures for nearly all of our materials and that combined with procedural generated textures. Most of the textures we'll use in the next video are used from the Seamless Texture Pack Volume 2 from iceclots.de and this pack is also in the bonus content of the commercial version of this workshop. To show you the creation of the basic material we mostly will use the stone we have created in one of the previous videos. Now I split the window and above I choose the node editor. Then I select the stone and add a new material. Keep in mind to enable the Cycles render engine before. In addition, in the user preferences add-ons I enable the node wrangler add-on. This gives us some more shortcuts and tools for editing our nodes. And we'll use one of those functions a lot but more info about that later. While editing our materials it's important to have a basic lighting in our scene so that we can see everything very well and also it's important to have some highlights so we can see the reflection even better on the surface. I just add a HDRI map to the world settings basically a 360 degrees sky image which will light up our scene from all sides. By the way, in the commercial version of this workshop you'll get 10 of those HDRI maps sponsored by Greg Zahl from hdrihaven.com. Okay, but I will talk a little bit more about HDRIs and lighting in another video. Okay, to enable viewport rendering I press Shift Z and with Ctrl B I can choose a box. The smaller the box, the faster the render. If you want to disable the box, just press Ctrl, Alt and B. Okay, now let's start with our basic material. 
For that, besides the diffuse shader, I add the glossy shader and also the mix shader and mix the diffuse and glossy using the mix shader. Using the roughness value of the glossy shader, we can define how sharp or how soft the glossiness should be. Then I add an image texture node and click here on open and choose one of the stone textures from the seamless texture pack volume 2. This image texture I connect with the diffuse shader so that we can see the color on the surface of our object. But in this case Blender does not know how to map the texture onto the object because we don't have defined any UV map. And because of that I add the texture coordinate node and connect the object output to the vector input of the image texture. Using the object mapping method the texture will be projected onto our object with always the same size. That means no matter how big or small the object is, the texture has always the same size. And this is very useful if we want to use one texture in one material on different objects with maybe different sizes. So the texture has always the same size, so all the objects are fitting together. Okay, now we'll use the Node Wrangler add-on while clicking shift control left click on one of the nodes and then you can see there will be added a viewer node basically this is an emission shader and this shows us the result of the node tree to the node we have clicked on on the surface of the object and if i control shift click on the image texture you can see just the texture on the object and here you can see very clearly that the texture is stretched on the sides of the object. And that's because here under projection flat is enabled. That means the texture will be projected from the top on the object and so the texture gets stretched on the sides. And to fix that I choose box. Then the texture will be projected from six sides like a box onto our object. But unfortunately on the most of the objects which have no square shape we'll have some bad seams. But no problem with that, we simply increase the blend value to blend over these seams. Yeah, and with this simple trick we can use a seamless texture projection from all sides onto our object and we don't have to create any UV maps or paint over some seams. To define the size of the texture I add a mapping node between the texture coordinate and the image texture node. And using the scale values we can define the size in x, y and z direction. The higher the value the smaller the texture on the surface. When I add another stone and place a material on it you can see also on another object with another shape the texture fits perfectly. When I scale the second stone a little bit bigger in object mode, you can see also the texture will be scaled with it. That has something to do with the object scale and this is bigger than 1 in this case. And to fix that, simply press Ctrl A and apply the scale and then the scale value is back at 1. The object now has another size and then the texture has the same size as on the other stone. Yeah, and this apply scale option is very very useful when you use the same material on different objects. Okay, if you want to delete the viewer node and see the final result, simply press Ctrl Shift left click on the last node before the material output node and then the last node will be correctly connected to the material output node. And then you see the result in the 3D view. Now we will create a specular map converted from our already imported stone texture. And for doing so I simply add a color ramp and connect the color output from the texture node with the color ramp and the color output from the color ramp with the fact value of the mix shader. So if I click Ctrl Shift left click on the color ramp you can see Basically the color ramp converts the image into black and white. Black and white you also can define as 0 and 1. And also the fact value of the mix shader you can set to 0 or 1 or anything between those two values. 
If you set the fact value to zero, just the upper shader will show up on the object. And if you set it to one, just the lower shader shows up on the object. Yeah, and with this black and white texture, basically we have this one and zero values all over the texture. And connecting this with the fact value means we define that everywhere with black color, just the texture, the upper shader will show up. And everywhere where the white value is, the lower shader, that means the glossiness, will show up. And with the color ramp, you can define how much black and how much white you should have in the specular map. To create a simple bump map, we add the bump node. Just like for the specular map, we connect the color output from the texture with the height input of the bump node. And also we connect the normal output with all the normal inputs of the different shaders. So the bump map affects those shaders. And also here, according to the black and white values in the texture, we will have the roughness on the surface. White values will be put up and black values will be put down. And to increase or decrease the strength of the bump map, just adjust the strength value. And if we zoom in, you can see we have this uneven surface, which will be influenced by the lighting. Yeah, and that's all for our basic material. We have the color, the bump and the specular map. Yeah, and this simple material we can already use for different objects. And then you simply can replace the texture and everything is already set up.